Hello. In recent weeks, you have learned how to write your own code for simulating an MM1 queue. You are obviously not the first people to do this, and it will come as no surprise to you to learn that there are many Python packages that you can use to perform these kinds of simulations. In this next series of exercises, I'm going to teach you how to use one of these packages, Queuing Tool, which is written by D. Jordan. Furthermore, you will see that this tool allows you to simulate more complicated networks of queues and to incorporate more of the features of queues that appear in the real world. Before getting on to how queuing tool works, let's briefly remind ourselves about the details of the MM1 queue. At the top of this slide, I have a diagram showing an MM1 queue. The leftmost arrow on this diagram illustrates the arrival of agents from the outside world. As we are simulating an MM1 queue, the times agents arrive is determined by simulating a Poisson process. The circle indicates the area where the agents receive service from the single teller who is able to provide service to the customer. Each agent takes a random amount of time to be served. Furthermore, because we are simulating an MM1 queue, the service time is an exponential random variable. The final bit of this diagram between the inward arrow and the circle indicates the place where the queue forms. As you are no doubt aware, queues will form if agents arrive while other agents are being served by the teller. These agents will have to wait for, the, for those who are in front of them in the queue to finish receiving service before they themselves get served. In the exercise that goes with this video, we will be simulating this type of queue using queuing tool. For the time being, however, we are focusing on analysing the data that comes from these simulations and not the setup of the queue. In the rest of the video, we will thus focus on running the simulation with queuing tool and analysing the data that is output. If you want to know how to set up the simulation, I would recommend looking at my other video on queuing tool. So the first step in writing a program that uses queuing tool is to write the code shown here to import the queuing tool module. Once you've imported the queuing tool module using a command like this one, your program is calling a function from within this module, queuing tool, whenever you see a command that starts with qt dot. This first command here, which starts with qt dot, is thus calling a method from the queuing tool module. The particular method that this command calls sets up a queuing tool object called qn. As I have already mentioned, the way to use this command is discussed at length in the later exercises and in the other videos I have made on queuing tool. For now, though, we will simply note that we have created a queuing tool object called qn. Notice that every single call in the rest of this stone code starts with qn rather than qt. The reason for this change is that we are calling methods that belong to the object called qn. For instance, the next command that I have revealed here tells queuing tool that when we run simulations of the queue that was created by the second line of this program, we should um, collect data for analysis. The next command tells queuing tool about how people enter the queue we are simulating. Again, this command is discussed in more detail in my other video on queuing tool. For now, you just need to know that this command needs to be there in your code. The final command is the one that really matters for this video. This is the command that tells queuing tool to run the simulation. This particular command tells queuing tool to run the simulation of the queue for 100 time units. Here is the code from the last slide one further time. If you copy this code into the REPL exercises that accompanies this video, it should run. Nothing will be output, however. Uh, the simulation will run, but there will be no evidence, or more importantly data, that it ran afterwards. To extract information on what occurred during the simulation, 
you have to add a command similar to the one shown here. This command tells queuing tool to save the data about what occurred during the simulation of the queue, called QN, to a variable called data out. The word agent that is used in the function name that we have called here is what queuing tool calls what we have called customers in previous videos. In other words, agents are the folks that enter the queue at random times and patiently wait to be served. The agents are not the folks who are providing service. The agents are the folks who are being served. The data out object that we allocate when we call this command is a type of Python object called a dictionary that we have not seen before. A dictionary is essentially a set of key value pairs. Dictionaries are a bit like the lists or arrays that we've seen elsewhere. In a dictionary, however, the keys that we use to refer to the values don't have to be numbers. In other words, a dictionary is like a list where we reference the elements using words of our choosing, such as tree, fish or apple, rather than numbers. Dictionaries are useful, and if you want to go further with Python, you should learn how to use them. For the time being, however, all you need to know is how to iterate over all of the elements in the dictionary data out that is being set by this command. If you can write such a loop, you can get the data on each of the agents that entered the queue. You can write a loop over the agents that entered the queue during the simulation by writing a loop similar to the one shown here. The print command here will then provide information about what one particular agent did during the simulation. The information on each agent is output in a numpy array like the one shown here. There is one of these numpy arrays for each agent in the simulation um, and each of these are output when we run this command. The first three columns in this array all contain times. The first column contains the arrival time in the queue for the agent. The second column is the agent's enter service time. And the third column is the agent's departure time. The next two columns contain numbers. The fourth column tells you the length of the queue when the agent arrived. And the fifth column contains the total number of agents, including the one who has just arrived, who, is, who are in the queue. You're probably wondering why there are two rows in this matrix at this point. If there is a single queue, then each agent has a single arrival time, a single enter service time and a single departure time. As we will see in the second video on queuing tool, the queuing tool module allows us to simulate networks of queues. There are often multiple lines because there are multiple queues. Even in the simple example of an MM1 queue, there are these multiple lines because when the agent is done with service for the first queue, they leave and enter a second queue that represents them leaving the system. The final column of our numpy array here thus tells you which queue generated the data in the elements of the row. The first row in our numpy array here contains data about the zeroth queue, which is the MM1 queue um, indicated here. The second row, meanwhile, is the fake queue that the agent enters once they have been served. You can clearly see here that the agent arrives in this fake queue at the moment they depart from service in the first queue. The fact that all the four numbers after the arrival time in the second row are zero indicates that the agent does not need to queue for or receive service in this null queue. Now that you understand what data can be extracted on each agent from queuing tool, it should be reasonably straightforward for you to work out how to analyze your simulations. 
Suppose, for instance, that we want to analyse the amount of time each agent spends queuing and waiting to be served. We can extract this data by using a code similar to the one shown on this slide. As discussed in the last slide, the first line here extracts the data on the agents from our simulations. The second line then creates an empty list called times but will eventually hold information on the total time that each agent spent queuing and being served. The next line then loops over all the agents who were simulated so that we can do some analysis. Within the loop, you see that we append an element to the times list. Consequently, this list will contain one element for each agent who was simulated. The quantity that is appended in this list is the difference between the two elements between two particular elements of the data array for that particular agent. If you remember the structure of the data array that was introduced in the previous slide, you can quickly see that this difference is found by taking the departure time and subtracting their arrival time. The times array thus contains the total time each agent spent in the queue and being served. Easy. There is a problem with the code we have written here though. For some of the agents that we have simulated, the data array will look like the one shown here. This array appears to be telling us that this agent departed the queue at time t equals zero. Given that they arrived at t equals 9.41, this would suggest that the total time they spent queuing and being served is negative. We can understand what is going on here if we look at the code that we wrote for performing the simulation one further time, which is shown here. Recall that we ran the simulation for a fixed time. All that has happened here is that there has not been enough time in our simulation for this agent to enter the queue and receive service. The enter service time and departure time for this agent are thus set to zero because the simulation finished before they entered service. When writing our code for analyzing the data that is generated by our simulation of the queue, we need to take account of the fact that some agents might not have received service yet. We can do this by adding an if statement in the code above, something like this. With this code, we are ensuring that the departure time is later than the arrival time. The, we thus avoid analyzing the data on agents who did not finish getting served by the end of our simulation. Hopefully, that is enough to get you started with analysing the data that is output from curing tool simulations. Thank you for your attention and good luck with the exercises that follow.